Welcome home. We are WNST, Tassa Baltimore and AM 1570. We call it Baltimore Positive. We're positively taking Crab Cake Row out on the road beginning February 5th. Uh, for 27 years around here, we've been going to Super Bowls. Uh, this time we're going to have a cup of soup or bowl uh, for the Maryland Food Bank. Uh, we're setting it all up with our sponsors, with friends for 100 charities. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. John Martin has said I can hold up the uh, the Ravens scratch-offs because they're still good. They're still out there. Uh, we have winners throwing footballs in the pass for cash this week in the divisional round. And I don't know what it would be like to be those two winners that you're holding out the hope that the Ravens win so you can throw a football on the field during the AFC Championship game to win $10,000. But the Maryland Lottery allows that. Uh, our friends at Window Nation as well, 866 nation and Jiffy Lube Multicare, put this out on the road to make Crab Cake Row happen. Uh, and we'll be telling you more about that in the coming days and weeks. This guy's going to be participating, but not really because he's got like anniversaries and work and he manages money and he has tickets and he's trying to win the lottery. And he's trying to get to Las Vegas like a lot of fans are. And we all have a plan to do all of this stuff, Leonard Raskin, except that they got to win two football games in order for anybody to have any of these visions of Las Vegas and the Strip and the Rat Pack and whatever you do in Las Vegas that makes you happy. I don't know what your Vegas thing is, mm. uh, Leonard. I don't think you're a gambling guy, but I think you've been to Vegas no. a few times. Um, I know you've been to the last two Super Bowls, so I know this is important to you. Uh, I asked you about doing radio next week after the playoff game before the championship game here, and you're like, wow, I got this and that working. Like, real life gets in the way of all this because it does. nobody actually plans like their whole January wide open, and then it happens. And you're a ticket holder, and give everybody your week this week because you're a little crazy. Just gotta move, you're not like just a jet setter. You around. don't travel a whole lot. Got to move things around. That's going all. On, got dude. a got a couple business conferences. Uh, they pop up in January, February, March. It's really crazy, but in because my guys world, like you want to go to golf courses and do that sort of thing. Yeah, a lot right? of a lot of industry conferences in the first quarter of the year. They try to get them out, knock them out, do the first quarter, and then leave you the rest of the year to to go do your business. But a lot of things going on. So I'm uh, Dallas bound. I was Dallas bound for the Cotton Bowl, which was a disappointing game for the Ohio State University. But so be it. I'm Dallas bound for a couple days. And then I buzz back into town and pick up the uh, the Ravens game against the, the Houston C.J. Stroud Rookie of the Year Ohio State quarterback, who I'll be rooting soundly against. Yeah, I mean, you're conflicted uh, here a little bit, but not really. No, at not, at not, not, at not, all. At all. not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, this I is what to happens Joe. when your university player goes and plays, you know. That's it, right. It's, right. It's the way it goes now. So I wanted to see Joe have a good game. Joe had a nice game till he didn't. Uh, two pick sixes. That's very sad. Uh, and and Houston won. So now we, we get the fighting C.J. Strouds and the Houston Texans, who are a good ball team. I think they're playing good ball. They got a couple receivers hurt, which doesn't hurt us at all that's a good thing i guess and and he's throwing the ball all over the place and he's having a great season and we played him the first game of the year they had a good game we just beat him but i think this is a different team so we're gonna have to step up everybody's gonna have to be on board but i think we'll win this game and uh then i'm i'm off jetting out right after the game little little florida trip for a couple days and then i'll be back uh hopefully for the championship game and i don't really care who we play because I just want to see the championship game here come through Baltimore. I don't care Kansas City or Buffalo. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're good. Did you go to, to any of the other of championship teams. games? I mean, you were you were younger yeah. and a traveling. Yeah, man, eight, no. Nine, eleven. Went to New Rogers. England. You went to New went England. Went to New England a couple times. Watched us win. Watched us lose. Okay, so you, you uh, this is not your first rodeo at an AFC championship game. No, about. well, first at home. Right. Of course. It'll be the first at home. So here's first, first for everybody. Almost. It's 1971. Right. I mean, I am looking for yeah, people I actively go there literally next week that went to that game. I was at Ghost to the Post. I had JT the Brick on this week talking about that. I, I was at the, the Kroner game. I was a little boy, but I was I was at the Fog game with Tony Linhart. So I was at some big games in the 70s. No, but this is before. Never, this predates never to a Never to a Colts game that, that mattered. Went to one one or two Colts game in my life. Again, we were. We were so poor we couldn't pay attention, so that wasn't happening. Uh, it was a big investment a, for my dad. I mean, honestly, yeah, at that time, like, sure. Orioles no, tickets we were had two bucks, Colts tickets were eight bucks. It was just a right. Lot, we had you nothing. Know? We had nothing. We weren't doing that. So, so uh, I remember watching some of those games on on what was it? Five uh, K HD. Hold the rabbit ears so that picture comes in, son. TV. 
Uh, <laughs> at two so o'clock, I remember, because the blue yeah. laws wouldn't let him kick off at one. Right, I remember those days. And so I watched watched a couple of those games. But no, this is this is hopefully going to be a good win against uh, Houston. And then I don't care, Kansas City or Buffalo, whoever comes in here, I think we've got the talent to win that game. And I think we are two for two in Super Bowl appearances, and I'd like to see us go three for three. So, yeah, no, can't can't match up the schedule with with the world. And uh, so I'll be traveling. I'll be watching. I'm I'm lucky enough to be home for the home games. The boy was going to come in. He can't be here. Uh, Wednesday, this week, Wednesday night, the Ohio State Band is doing Script Ohio, which if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Uh, Script Ohio on court at the Cleveland Cavaliers halftime. Who are they playing that night? I have no idea. You going to the game? No, no, you no, can't. I'm not no. going to Cleveland. No, not going to Cleveland. So, so we'll, you do we'll run watch. around with this kid to some weird places. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. You were like Upper yeah. Michigan watching hockey and some crazy. Yeah, no, you did we, crazy I, things, right? I would go if I didn't have other plans. I'd get there, but we're, we're not going. But they're doing it at Cleveland. So the NBA. Cleveland. I don't know Why would show. I go to Cleveland? Right. January, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That's the only reason. This is the only reason I would go to Cleveland in January. It would be football. Oh. Or the boy doing something, and he's doing something. So we'll see if it's on TV. If it's not on TV, the Ohio State Athletic Band page will have it. YouTube will have it after the game. They'll put it up. Be able to watch it. They play Hang uh, on Sloopy? What do they play? They they play the marching. The marching. Uh, the, I don't know the, the Ohio State French. song. Oh, uh, well, there's three of them. See, so I, you've got the like, French. Dude, if I know your song, chances are I hate it. Like, I well, know the go. Michigan song. I hate it. No, I know no, the Notre no. so Dame have, song. So you know the song songs. I really hate is a North Carolina fight song as a oh, Maryland fan because right. – Too many I basketball that, games with that. I can hum that song right now and not in a good way, you know, like, no, the, so, as so I wear Carolina State, blue. <laughs> Ohio State has two – so when they do script, they it's a French battle song, French marching battle song that they do it too. It's really amazing. It's awesome. You should, you should watch is it, it Napoleonic here. or what is it? No, you, you'll hear it. I'll, you'll hear it. You'll watch it on YouTube. <laughs> and then they have the fight song, which so once they march on and do the script, then when they're done the script, then they'll play the fight song, which is a pretty good fight song. They'll do that. Then depending upon how much time they have, and I don't know how much time they're being allotted by the Cavs, uh, they'll play Hang On Sloopy. That's kind of like the you three. You gotta play Hang On. The Ohio State well, fans that's, does not come to that's Cleveland what they and not do. play Hang On. I'm so to say that's what they do. And then he does it again on Saturday uh, at halftime of the men's basketball game at home. I think they're playing Penn State. So he does it twice. So because he has to do it Saturday on court, he can't fly home for so the football game. So he's a senior, game. right? Yes, correct. So he, this is these his... are all the A-list assignments with the basketball. Yes. This has been yes. the best year. So you did go to the Cotton Bowl? Yeah, yeah. Did we not Bad. talk about this at all? We just you talked got, about it a little bit. You were bit. so lubed up on the Ravens last week and on, we yeah. might play Flacco, we might, who are we going to play, and like all yeah, that. Yeah, Cotton Bowl Man, was a bad game. Great trip, The wild card game. games all stunk other than the, the oh, Detroit game. I mean, one, right? One good game. The rest were dreadful, and and – how about the NFC? What is it? East, least? What do they call it? The the Cowboys and the Eagles both just went into. We didn't play winning teams during the season, so now we had to play somebody decent, and we folded up like a chair. Although the Eagles had folded up five out of six at the end of the season, they looked really bad. I don't know what happened to them. They went from like like sort of like Miami. They went from we're stellar to we stink in in a month. It, it just goes go to show, I guess, how hard. To not making the playoffs. And, like, oh. it's so biblical. And in that town, I remember one year the Redskins started, like, 7-1 and one and didn't make yep. the playoffs. You know yep. what I mean? And, I, listen, there's all of this disappointment, but I want to get to, like, to your purple heart, Leonard Raskin. Yeah, you're going, sure. You're going to go freeze. You're going out. Better there, win. Take, Better take win. Better win. I keep saying that. I keep, Better win. And, and it, I feel like a jerk. I feel like the guy on the radio that's the coach no. killer and, like, all that. Dude, you could talk about Harbaugh. They're firing M McCarthy, who won a Super Bowl in Dallas, because his team didn't win last week, right? Like, right. I don't know. And I don't think the Ravens People are in capable Philly. People of in losing Philly, to didn't Houston they, by 30 points at home. Didn't, I, I, they, didn't happen, Philly win you know? the Super Bowl? Didn't Philly, like, 48 the weeks Super ago, they, they lost the Super Bowl, but they, they right. were in played, the Super Bowl. Played in the Super Bowl against the Chefs. The Chefs. And and then suddenly, they're calling for the coach's head 
because he lost in the first round of the playoffs and something happened at the end of the year. They didn't play well. What this the NFL is is brutal. I mean, brutal. If you were a weatherman and had to produce NFL results, we'd have new weather people on the air every two weeks in town. My yeah, goodness. I, and, and I don't know that that like one of the Ravens wow. strengths, the real strength that they're playing here is that Bashadi's left the Costa and. Uh, yeah. And 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 Harbaugh alone, he gets credit for being a great owner. For, he's also left Chad Steele alone, which is dangerous. Right. Well, but, hey. but 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 I but I would say from a from a from that perspective on the football side. Yeah, he's let that, him operate that. And they're capable in the same way that Mike Tomlin, as much as they're always trying to did. You saw him walk off the podium, right? Like this is a really somebody asked him about his about coming back or his, his contract or something. He just yeah. left. He's got one he left. year left on his right. deal. Who and with one year left, leave? The, the guy has only put together 17 winning seasons in a row. What do they want? Yeah. Super Bowl or death? I mean, and, and not just Super Bowl, but Super Bowl win, and not just win, but every year. There's well, only you just one. said it, Leonard. Leonard, There's you're only getting antsy. One. It's been 11, 12 years here, right? Like, you're getting antsy, and you're like, all right, Kansas City's had theirs. Buffalo's never had theirs, but this is our year. And I That's think right. that, that, that the part of this where everybody is like, you better win. Like, there is Today, no this, other this week. expectation. You got to win this week. Hey, look, look, Lamar promised a Super Bowl. When he got drafted, he said, Going to bring home a Super Bowl. So this is it. This is the year. You got all the talent. You got the receivers. You might even have Mandrews. Holy cow. Could you imagine him coming back? And you picked up Dalvin Cook, who's dying to have a good game. Uh, I just can't see them losing to Houston. I really can't. Unless there's some, again, they, they've they lost, as I see it, this season. We've talked about this. They lost one game this year. Scrubs play. Pittsburgh beat them. Backups in Pittsburgh beat him last game of the year. So what? The other three games, we beat ourselves in those games. Game against the Colts, Steelers early in the year, Browns, bad mistakes, stupid plays, beat ourselves. We have not lost to a decent team this season. And we have we have played really, really good ball in the last month. And I don't see any reason. You look at the Eagles like we talked about, Dallas, they they weren't playing well coming in and they got beat. Uh, the teams that have been playing really well in the last month all showed up. And, I, don't, I mean, Houston's playing good ball, but I don't think they come in here and beat us. It just doesn't seem possible. Houston 11-5 and five in their last 16 games. And, I, you know, I had John McClain on, Stephanie Stradley, going down to Houston this week to do some conversation with them to learn a little bit about it. I mean, you've been watching Stroud from the beginning. I mean, I asked yep. John McClain, been watching football 50 years, like, at what point did the light go on that this kid might be that kid? Because they had Deshaun He's Watson there. They had Matt Shaw playing there. better than they, good. You know, Better than good. He was good. He was a good quarterback at Ohio State. One of the claims, one of the things people didn't like, he didn't scramble enough. He didn't move enough. He's moving all over the field. His his passing was never a question. He can drop a dime in any receiver's hands. You name the route, he can throw it. The kid has got arm talent, and he's smart. That's the other thing. He sees the field really well. He's smart. So you get a quarterback who's got great talent, and who can see – I mean, he's too young. He's too smart for too young for the NFL. He sees years what's old, coming. Right? Yeah, he sees what's coming, and he plays great ball. Well, they're dangerous because so they don't know any better, right? And that's right. Say, they're rookie kids. Coach, rookie quarterback, they that's, can't no, win. The Ravens are this good, that good. Playing with house punt, money. Fumble. House money. Ball goes you never up know. in the air. Like, I, you know, right. I, we all expect them to win. Leonard Raskin is here. He is Raskin Global. He manages money. Also manages expectations to some degree, right? Yes, like, absolutely. So, to, I, I'm going to throw a little um, – a little Tony Robbins on you, a little philosophical sure. thing sure. you can go with it. You can take with your money management and say the past does not equal the future, right? No, so how the they present. played against San Francisco, how they played against Irrelevant. the Lions. They, well, we find that out because the Cowboys had a good year too, right? That's and the right. Eagles had a good start and they're out. And, and, and the Packers looked at giving up for dead. And so does Houston, right? And they're still playing. And they have a yep. chance. And nobody's given any of these teams other than San Francisco a chance Buffalo. on the NFC side, right? Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo was, dead. Was, was no good. And then they started playing well. And then suddenly they won the division because the Dolphins folded. And, and now they got a home game against the Mahomes, who's never played a road playoff game. And who knows what's going to come out of that, but I can tell you what, either of those teams are going to be tough in the championship game. I just hope to see it.
So, yeah, we should win, but but expectations are high, very high. And I think people will be brutally disappointed if we lose on Saturday. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, if, yeah. from, from, from your perspective on all of this, having been through it the last couple of times, and your boys out at Ohio State, your wife, yeah. you know, you have lots of clients where you are. Your temperature on all of this about the Vegas side of things, being able to afford it and going out there and how much is too much and whether you'd be anywhere else in the world and there's a price or, or you know, I get a man cave or, hey, I'm going to go up to Hollywood Casino or, hey, I'm going to watch the game at home this time because I went to the last two. Where, where are you along the spectrum? Because I think the AFC Championship game, I've talked to Luke about this, that's something nobody here has seen. An AFC Championship right. game in Baltimore right. is really special. I don't know, a four. It'll be it's outstanding. Probably, it's going to be four to $600. It might be five degrees. It might be 55 degrees. It's Baltimore last week of January. Right. I don't you know. You never know. Um, I know it's I, I haven't talked this to, week for sure. I haven't talked to anyone, clients, friends, anybody who said to me, I'm going to the Super Bowl. We go, I'm going to the Super Bowl. I'm going to the Super Bowl. Haven't talked. Nobody said that to me. Usually hear that. Haven't heard that at all. Uh, Why do you think week, that is? I think it's too expensive. I think people are feeling like, unless I get a, a face price ticket, which whatever the heck that price it's is. $5,000 minimum. For If you win the like lottery from the team? If you win the lottery from the team, you'll get a $5,000 offer for a ticket. And you'll be sitting in the 50-yard line in the section 550-whatever in the last row of the stadium. Is that what no, it is? No, you'll be in you'll you'll be on the you'll be in the end zone. You'll be above the uh Al Davis flaming. You think pit. so? You think so? Five thousand dollars will be the cheapest. That'll be the worst seat. That'll be the roof seat. Yes. Well I, I would think the team would have sideline upstairs something for the Fans that they, they do sell. have that available. That's seventy two fifty. You know what I mean? Well, like, whatever it is, like, I it, mean, the, 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 it's going to be a lot of money. If you, I, yes. I, I look forward to you. I hope you hit the lottery because I right, want so we you can to talk hit about me. it. We can talk we can about talk what really about happened it. because That's because right. there, there there are no twelve hundred and fifty dollars tickets this time around. There are yeah, no twenty five hundred dollars tickets this time around. They're just last not. time. It's not the way the league time, prices. I think. It. Trying to think if it was the first bowl. I think it was the first bowl. It was three hundred dollars space for the. For the Tampa game, three or four hundred dollars was face on the ticket. My first Super Bowl ticket, and I can go find it. Well, I had a fifty-yard line lower seat. Right, uh, I was in Donald Trump section. Donald yeah. and Marla sat five rows in front of me. There Jimmy Jam from from uh, Janet Jackson. Jam. It was, was Minneapolis Super Bowl, so there was a right. lot of Minneapolis people there. Evander Holyfield was in my section. That's I was on the fifty-yard line. Steve Sabres. Right behind me in the front of the press box. First time yep. I ever met Steve, Steve, Steve Sables that day. It's 1992. I think my ticket at the time was $150. Right. Go figure. Like, I, I think it was $150. It might have been $200 or $250, but I think it was that much. And keep in mind, like, when I was going to Oiler games in Cleveland, tickets were $18. $7, right. You know, no, it was, 90, it was 1992. It wasn't 19 20 bucks. But, yeah, bucks. but, but, I mean – but the price now is it, – it's just – It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and the league knows. And by the way, there's another thing. I didn't tell you about this, but my ticket broker told me most of the tickets, most of the yep. tickets that are out have a chip, a digital chip. They can only be transferred one time. Nice. So, they're, the, so the markup thing that's there – is the end user special. needs to be the one buying it because they cannot resell it. So the the, the old days of flipping tickets, the ticket you right. sat in came from a player that went through a brokerage here and a firm there and a business guy there and a guy on the airplane sold it to you. And he would <laughs> hand Tampa, you the ticket. Would hand, hand you, the you the ticket. Yeah, with the little hologram. Now it's the back, now right? it's on yeah. your phone, on your phone, digital and locked up. It's all locked up. It's crazy. Well, yeah, we were we were at the Cotton Bowl. We're walking around outside the Cotton Bowl pregame. They had a big tailgate. Uh, so we're there hanging out, and there's guys walking around. Anybody got a ticket? Anybody got a ticket? I'm thinking to myself, what do I have to do? This guy's going to Venmo me or ticket, or, or I'm going to set it up on StubHub. He's going to send me the money. Then I'm going to seat geek transfer the ticket to this guy out of my phone. I don't even know how you do that anymore outside the stadium. 
You know what? what I'm gonna be, I, I've already made up my mind. Ravens room. We're going to Hollywood Casino. We're just going to hang out because I just want to pull in, park, have my food, have my drinks, have the big screens, have the sound. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I mean, I've done it a million different ways. I've been to all these Super Bowls. Right. I, I want people to go and have a good time. I want the Vegas I'm experience hoping. that I for everyone else that I had in New Orleans, that I had in Tampa. Then yep. I feel like yep. I had a couple. Of, I had a couple of beautiful Super Bowl experiences after all the years I went, where I just went and thought. This was a really nice city to do it in. I thought Indianapolis was fantastic. I've been to a couple. Arizona's done a nice job a couple of times with it. Um, but, you know, uh, L.A. And, and New Orleans and these different places, Vegas is a whole different animal for people going yeah. out there, for pricing, for getting there, for being there. Um, I just hope that it can yeah, be a no rich problem. experience for our fans. Because I'm like you. you I got no problem getting there. You got no problem getting there. You got no problem staying there. The question is a ticket and what I'm willing to pay. You know, I go back, go back in time to uh, you, you'll know the year. I don't know the year. Uh, the All Star Game, MLB All Star Game, 1993, at July 11, yeah. 1993. Yeah. So look at you. July 12. So I, so I had uh, season tickets to the Orioles back then, and I got tickets to the Home Run Derby thing and the All Star Game, and I had two tickets, and I sold those tickets for enough back then to pay for my whole season for the Orioles. It was $1,000 a ticket to get into that game. Yeah, right? and I, I sold them for enough to pay for the whole season. It was magic. I didn't need to go watch the All-Star game. So you, the Free Willy sign, Randy Johnson, John Crock, you didn't see any yeah, of that. Yeah, didn't matter. Television. Saw it on TV. I, I've been to the stadium. I saw it. Okay. Were you at the Cal Ripken 21-31? Yes, night? 30 All and right. 31, yes. All right, and you've been at every Ravens seminal moment, right? Like, Yeah. Every all time Ray stuff. Dance, all the Colts game, all that stuff, you were at all. The, Last the bad game of the year. Too, right? I mean, you're, you're yeah. when they lose, I, I mean, the, that's that's part of doing it. Bad that. stuff. Bad stuff, too. Do you do you happen to catch uh, any of the Manning cast? Really funny. I know Ray Lewis was on. He was on I, this, and this I game. And I up, and I missed it. Oh, and... it was funny. What did funny. he say? They, like, what was good? Because everybody was buzzing about it, and I haven't they seen it. They are so – well, the two of them. Well, I know. They hate each other. Yeah, I know. They're hysterical. And they had Ray on. They're talking about uh, Ray was just killing the Eagles for lack of tackling. Like they just weren't interested. And they he was talking about how badly they were playing, how how many how it was impossible to miss some of the tackles they missed and some of these scores that that they gave up. It was just terrible. I he keep was forgetting crying. that they're really like in a playoff game, especially they wouldn't yep. just be BSing. They would be like it's a game. Cast. Oh. They, they stick. Well, to they the were. Game. They were, but they were also shooting the shooting the bull, and he was screaming at, at the Eagles for how bad they were. And then uh, they were talking about. So Peyton asked him. Peyton said he's he's taking his boy and he's doing a whole uh, circuit. He's done like a circuit for the games, and and he wanted to come to Baltimore this weekend, and he wanted to know if if he'd be booed if he came to Baltimore. Uh, and he said he could hang out with Ray. If he hung out with Ray, he'd be good. And Ray is his defensive coordinator for the Pro Bowl flag football game. So it's it's Peyton and Eli are the head coaches again. And I think uh, Ray is Peyton's defensive coordinator. And so he's going to come so to Baltimore. they were shilling the Pro Bowl. Okay. Good yeah, yeah, them. sure. Because right, it's good, good. I think it's on ESPN. Uh, the Pro Bowl is the worst thing is. ever. If they can ever it's make dreadful. it good. Even dreadful. if they can make the broadcast good. If they can make the broadcast good, it might right. be good. Right, but they got to pay Manny Eli to do the broadcast. As, as coaches, right. they were, were they coaches last year? Yeah, yeah. Got him watching. And, so, right. and, and Eli won it. Peyton was, Peyton was angry. Eli won. Anyway, Ray Ray told uh, told Peyton to come to the game. And he said, so if I hang out with you, he, he asked him if he was going to be there. Ray said, of course, he was going to be here. And he, he asked him if he hung out with him, if he'd be safe in Baltimore. He said he'd be safe in Baltimore no matter what. People wouldn't boo him because people love greatness here. And, and they'd honor uh, Peyton's greatness. And and so Peyton says, it was pretty funny. He goes, you know, the whole Colt thing, uh, when the Colts left, he, he said, you know, I was, I was eight years old. <laughs> it's like, I really, I really didn't have anything to do with that. It was pretty funny. He said, you, you think the people there are over it? Ray said, no, I don't, I don't think they're over it, but Ray said that. <laughs> good. Good for Ray. Yeah. All right. Good. good. But it, it was, it was just funny. They're, they're so funny. They are so funny. And they had uh, Bruce Arians on the first half. 
Oh, I love Bruce too. Bruce is a and, good man. And he's dropping he's dropping both of them, him and Ray. Not F bombs, but but they were shitting on the air and they were they were dropping some some cursing and they were funny. Bruce Arians was so, so funny. Uh you know, he he There's and, nobody they, in the sport that love Bruce Arians. He's just know? he was just a hoot. I, I had a great cocktail conversation with him one night with Marvin Lewis at the owners' meetings, um, and I, I enjoyed that immensely, as I remember it. He, yeah, he was the coach of the Cardinals at the time, and right. we were at the Biltmore in Phoenix, and he was uh, he was just a delightful guy. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I I don't watch when when the Manning cast is on. I don't watch Joe and Troy do Monday Night Football. I See, watch, I watch Joe and Troy. I'm I watch I'm Manning. Okay, no, all but right. Ma- the Manning brothers are hysterical. I really it feel is, like I screwed the pooch on this one because, like, everybody's telling watch. me how good. I'm going to try to go find it on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, they're not on. It's Look, it's not It's not long because, as you know, you know, the time on, on play, on air, and football is short. What do they play, you know? There's a 20 minute plays. visit or whatever, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so it's, it's good, but it's a lot, it was a lot of fun. They were funny and, and it was good stuff. So who knows? Might see Peyton and Eli. They were talking, Eli was talking about taking the train. I guess he still lives in Jersey. He was talking about, uh, when they used to play, uh, when New York would play Philly, they would take a bus. And when they play the, the Redskins, they take a train. Right. And when they played Baltimore, they would take the train. Well, so, whenever the Ravens have played the Jets or the Giants, they train. Yeah, I have no that idea. Was on one. I I've idea. only been on two team junkets in my life where I traveled with the team. Because the Maryland Lottery, you know, you, you dream, you win. They went yeah. on the Jacksonville trip and sweet holders and all of that. I've only been on two trips. I took the train back from a Giants preseason game mm. the summer that the Ravens won the Super Bowl. So it was like the Elvis Gerback year. Yeah. It yeah. was in August, and they Ugh. played the Giants. I No, nah, they, they played the Giants because they had just played the Giants in the Super Bowl. I went up to the Meadowlands, and I didn't have a ride home. I was sort of syndicated and working in right. New York. Right. And, and the Ravens said, take the train home with us. So I got to ride the Amtrak home. Yeah. Uh, from that. So, but food on these junkets on a football. I'll bet. It's great. The only other time I ever flew home, and I remember this vividly as well, it was two weeks after 9 11. My flight on America West. Remember America West? Yeah, sure. America West, because of 9 11, everything got canceled. Flights were canceled. Right, like of course. Crazy. America West just canceled the route out of Denver through Phoenix that was going to get me home to do my show on Monday. Mm. Um, this is back when I was a real media member. Like I had a show yeah, on Monday. It was right, important right. to do it, you know. So um, I asked Billick and David Modell. I'm like, I, you know, it, it was 2001, right? Uh, it was 9-11. So I was sort of stuck in Denver. Yep. And they're yep. like, just get on the team plane and come home with us. <laughs> and I remember that day vividly because um, I don't have anything to drink. But Tony Saragusa told me he loved me that day. <laughs> and, and you know why he told me he loved me? And this 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 isn't funny, but it speaks to he got hit in the head. He had a oh, concussion. Geez. They didn't have blue tents then or protocol right. then no, or any nothing. of that. You know, Goose was sitting with his, his suitcase, his bag, in his jacket with his hair all done up out of the shower. He had been removed from the game. He's like, hey, hey, come here, man. I just want to tell you I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, Goose, you got hit in the head. You know what I mean? Right. Like, this isn't good. Right. I'm you not know? your wife, buddy. So, I'm right, exactly. Wife. Yeah, so that was Denver, and I rode back. I rode the hour from Denver airport to the, to the airport with Rex Ryan, who was the defensive line coach. There you and go. he was telling me, I'll never forget this hour long. He's half ride. the man he used to be. You know what? He bragged that he never ate a vegetable in his life. And I he took looks him, good. I ate a lot of steak dinners with Rex Ryan. And he used right. to do the show all the right. time. He never had anything but a steak and a potato on his, on his plate. I swear to God, I'm nothing green could I'm ever come near him. You know what I'm, I'm saying? So Rex told me the <laughs> whole ride out to the airport. He kept, I'm telling you, I got a, I got a young player here, n- nasty. Kelly Gregg, old Kelly Gregg now. He played for my brother in Oklahoma. He's going to be a hell of a player. Kelly Gregg turned out to be a hell of a player, you know. He was. But I remember he that was. from riding the team junket. And I got right. on the plane, and it was like that Jerry in a lane scene or where he's flying right. internationally. More of anything, 
more of right. everything, you know. Absolutely. I had Dove bars. I had it, it was a beautiful flight. So when you go, when you when you're on the train with the Giants, it sounds like, oh, they're slumming on the train. Oh, no, no I'm, sure nice. they, I'm sure it's pretty nice. I'm sure it's really nice. Prime ribs. Sure you know, it's, it's absolutely really beautiful. It's like absolutely. the Silver Streak was back in the day. Leonard Raskin is here. He manages money so that you can afford to fly to these games from time to time. Um, tell give everybody a little bit of advice on all of this stuff and especially speak to the people that would whip their credit card out and go out to Vegas on a bender thinking they're getting a hundred dollar ticket and they're not. And well, they come back I and would... they have a they you know, they have a crazy bill because a lot of people went on that trip with me eleven years ago and had no idea how they were gonna pay for it. I mean that sincerely. Right. Right. Yeah, well, I, w- I wouldn't bet the farm. I don't care. It's a, it's a football game. I know it's an experience, but I, I would say just like a trip to Disney or, or a trip anywhere, make make sure that you know that if you're going, it, it's not an issue financially for you to be there. I would not would not take my kids' college money, my retirement money, you know, my future, and, and throw it on a football game. I don't care what the game is, but you can spend a lot of money in Vegas really fast. And as you said, you got to get there, and I'm sure the flight prices are insane. You got to stay there. And when we went to New Orleans, I mean, a hotel that would have been $150 was $1,000 for the Super Bowl day before day of. And four night so, minimum. Oh, oh yeah. So, so the hotels get you, the airlines get you, um, and then the ticket price is going to be ridiculous. So be careful with your money. Be smart if you have it and it's not an issue for you, and it doesn't affect your life, it's a different story. Feel free. Go. Enjoy. Have a ball. Report back. Tell us how great it was. I've already told but, Luke he's going to be on JT the Bricks couch because JT lives there, so that's that's my plan. There you go. That's it. Find a, <laughs> find a place. Find a place. I owe Brick There's- Crab Cakes when it's all over. He came on the show this week. You know, they you talk about things this week that's crazy with football, Leonard, is, is the hiring cycle, right? Like, all yep. of these coaches and guys getting hired, fired, they get paid a lot of money, but it yep. is uh, – the Raiders are looking for a coach. Belichick's out of work. Saban's retired. They fired yeah, Vrabel. Uh, you know, every, Harbaugh's doing the beauty tour, going everywhere. Like it. Yeah. It's quite yeah, a time for football. I read. I read something. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is talking to Michigan. Apparently, I, I don't know if it's true, but I read that if he signs with Michigan, there's going to be a clause in his contract that they can't terminate his contract if the NCAA comes back on the whole cheating thing and bust him up. That that's part that would be part of his deal. So if I'm guilty and I was, I, I then then you, you can't, can't let me go for you being. You can't hold me accountable on on the money side, on the money side. Yeah, you got to pay me my money. If I cost you, like we just won the national championship, and if the NCAA come in comes in and vacates that because I cheated, it's too bad for you, but not for me. It was very interesting to see that that's what. Was now, I don't know if it's true. I, I haven't heard the man say it. I haven't read any of the well, there's official. There's nobody but, in the state of Michigan that really thinks he's coming back to coach there, right? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe a player or two, but I can't imagine why. And and he's out doing the NFL tour. He's been in Atlanta and and I guess uh, Oakland, L.A., Vegas, Vegas, the Raiders. You know, wherever the heck they are this week. The the what's his name? Davis. I don't know the kid's name. Mark, 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 the Mark Davis with the most beautiful haircut of anybody in the world. Oh, look, we have a friend. Oh, look at this. You got your mountain dog. Look at you. What he's, kind of dog is that? This is a great Pyrenees. And he's, he just he comes up and pats you on the shoulder. like He this. just decided he wanted to come up and hold my shoulder while I was talking. So oh, he came beautiful? to join and he my came to join and like my show. See, my cat is came not. to join and say hello so if i put led zeppelin on the full volume downstairs my cat will go sit next to the speaker and listen to robert plant sing but does not want to hear me do radio so Uh, raskin is here he manages money raskin global he's my pal um he is going to be on a little bit of a a downtime next week uh before the afc championship game for all of you all the people out there who listen who love the ravens i i I want this for the city next weekend right i was was explaining to jt the brick how angelo's got in the way of having the super Super Bowl celebration Thursday right. night, but like national radio show guy doesn't even know that that existed. And I'm thinking right. we haven't had moments here. You know what I mean? Springsteen even canceled last year, right? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like we, we need, haven't had moments here. We need a big, here. we need a good big, well, you know, we had, we had the, uh, Oriole playoff game followed by a Billy Joel concert, which was a pretty good day. 
Uh, well, at least we need more. Though I, I agree with you. We, we talked need, about we that. Need we need days that, that matter. We need By days way, that matter. By the way, thank you. You, were, I was your guest at Billy Joel. Yeah, we had a ball. I, and I, I told the story. I didn't want to go with you because of the weather. It was cold and it was a pain in the ass. It was yeah. all of that. But I, I had, yeah. a, I had a great, great time. We had a ball. I mean, we I was, I was out till two in the morning. I met friends. I just had a, I, it, you got me <laughs> so, out that night. And I've been that's working it. my ass off. That's it was it. great. So, and I never really got cold. And I, and I danced. Yeah, it was beautiful. I had a beautiful night, right? Um, now we need the Ravens to perform on the field to make this a uh, an event and make the the championship game come through Baltimore and and be a good night. Well, I and just want to apologize to you for something about Billy Joel because um, I've been wanting to go see Billy Joel in New York, and I even told yeah. you when you were yeah, you gave me a yeah. free ticket, you were kind to me. I'm like, I'm gonna go see Billy where it's warm. I'm gonna get yeah. a seat at 50 feet from Billy one night before right. it gets too old, right. and too long. And I've already mentioned the late great Jimmy Buffett wanting to fly to St. somewhere. Uh, soon. And I, I had a $30 uh, bus ride up to Madison Square Garden. I had an Beautiful. inexpensive room with a friend and I went up and uh, and I saw Billy Joel for a hundred bucks uh, up in, in New York last Thursday night. I ate some good food Great. cheap. Good I got times. some five dollar pizza. And, to, you know, I, I need a night for Baltimore like this AFC championship game. Yeah, we got to have it. I'll tell you one thing it's going on for real with me, uh, Leonard. I, all the alumni, the Mike Flynn's and all the guys that live other places, they all have a flight in here next Saturday. Oh, yeah. Like, they're all hitting me like, we're, you we're going to Crabs next Saturday night. You're taking us to Costas. What are we doing? That's it. They, like, the alums want to be a part of it, too, because they've never experienced it. Even if you won the Super Bowl as a Raven, you didn't play. Right. You weren't in the stadium the night it happened for you. That's right. And I'll tell you, that night in Foxborough was magic. It was beautiful. It was, was a magical beautiful. night. It was so fantastic. Watching their fans leave at the end of the third quarter is nothing finer. Well, you better hope nothing it's not finer. this week or next well, week. Well, here we go. Here we go. Two weeks Two ears, weeks of great heart. football and on to the Super Bowl. All right. From your lips to uh, 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 Roger Goodell's ears. Um, Amen. Uh, okay. Museum? Uh, Museum? Playoffs? <laughs> Uh, he is Leonard Raskin. Museum. He's Raskin Global. You can find him uh, at raskinglobal.com. He manages money and gives people good advice and makes sure that you're not wasting your money and you're doing smart things with insurance and taxes and other crap that I promise you you don't understand as well as you should or as well as he does. So there, that's my that's there's my 30 second ad for you, Leonard. Uh, you can there also find him at the front of BaltimorePositive.com. But don't look for him after this weekend or before this weekend because he's running around doing good stuff, getting smarter. But he'll be at the game on the club level, freezing Absolutely. his arse off uh, beginning Indeed. about 30 on Saturday. Indeed. Bundle up, my friend. That's all I, I shall. can say. All I right. shall. Back for more on this. I'm WNST. We're Nestor. I'm Nestor. We're WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore positive.